Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. Still out working on the uh, O scale and ON30 layout. Uh, I've made some progress. I'll show you that here in a minute, but show you a little bit of an area I need to do some rework on. You can see where the bridge uh, ends and the plywood begins that the plywood is significantly bowed <laughs> down in that location. I uh, cut those pieces from a section of plywood that I'd had out in a shed. Uh, it was already bowed a little bit, but when I had the risers all in place, that uh, took the bow out because I, you know, mechanical fasteners, and it worked just fine. But now that that end is loose, it's not so good. I had to use a dowel and some other stuff just to kind of shim it up so I could uh, just run trains right there. I've got to replace it. So I've got to replace that section from the bridge over to that little section there where uh, you can see I've uh, butted it up against the other and used another piece of plywood to glue it. So it's not a big deal. I just need to take out that section and a small piece on the other side of the trestle as well, replace it with some uh, much flatter plywood and I've got plenty of scraps to do. So that'll be a piece that I'll just rework uh, here eh, later after I get the grades established for the ON30. Uh, none of the track is permanently in place, so while it's a bit of an inconvenience, it's not a major headache. What I have been doing here, and it is Saturday morning right now in Richmond, Virginia. It's cold, but sunny, uh, which is nice. And I've been working to establish the ON30 grade on this side of the layout. I'm going to have a 5 plus percent ruling grade coming out of this little area where there's going to be some lumber activities and a little bit of storage for some equipment. And then uh, heading up the uh, grade and heading up the mountain. So nothing is tacked into place. I've just created some risers out of one by stock and then some scrap pieces of plywood uh, to act as supports. And that way I can kind of move the, uh, you know, I can move things around a little bit if I need. Uh, it's loose until I can establish everything that I want. What I will do once I get this farther along is I will come back in with a piece of string and use the string method. And I will put uh, a piece of string starting here and then ending right at uh, like the three uh, inch elevation mark. And then I will fold that piece of string in half to find where my center point is between those so that I'm at my like one and a half inch elevation. Then I can put in another riser and establish that and that will be good. I will do the same thing between the, uh, the three inch and the six inch so I can establish another riser here and then here. And then between the nine and the six, so I've got another riser somewhere right in here and that will hold uh, the elevations in place. I'm gonna be putting in uh, a 12 inch riser here for that piece of track, which we'll pick up on the other side of this bridge. That one I'll get in place and then I'll take a scrap piece of plywood to just set on the top of this and then on the top of that and clamp it while I get everything else established and then start going to that end of the layout. First, I've gotta go uh, to the lumber yard and pick up a, few more one by threes that I can cut quickly. I've got plenty of scrap plywood so that I can make uh, the little, uh, little plates to uh, add bracing to these. So I've got plenty to do and uh, let's see uh, what kind of mischief I can get into here this weekend. Hey, just a quick video on how I'm using the string. So I've got uh, a piece of string set at my three inch elevation. And again, that's three inches above my base zero elevation, which is the, the lowest spot on the ON30. And then I've got the other end of the string set at my six inch elevation above that base zero. I've taken the string, I've already cut it to length, and then I folded it in half and I marked the string with some black in the spot where it's my uh, midpoint of the string. So right in this area is my four and a half inch elevation, uh, again, above base zero. So that will be easy. This will be where I will put another support in. And then uh, on the other side between six and my nine inch, I've already got it marked. Uh, you can kind of see it right there. So that's my seven and a half inch elevation. I will get all of these in place. I'm not gonna anchor anything in. I've got my uh, 12 inch uh, 
support over there right now letting the glue set. That's going to come in and be right about here. So I will uh, have my support braced off here and then angled over this way so I can support this piece. Then I will take a piece of scrap uh, plywood uh, once I get it up and just sort of clamp it here and then I will clamp it to there just to kind of run across this because there'll be a bridge cutting across over this lower elevation track. So I will get this done and uh, the additional supports and then I will uh, work that direction. I'm hoping by the end of the day I will have everything up and off the O scale uh, layout so I can run some trains again. I really want to run those freight cars that I've uh, been picking up from eBay. So more to come. So still making progress, getting additional supports in, still got to get some more. I'm about ready to go to the lumber yard. But you can kind of get a sense of how high the top track will be relative to the O scale below it. It's going to be a lot of sheer scenery on this particular side of the layout. Uh, bridges, cliffs, lots of stuff going on here. So that's the highest from there. It's going to start going back down on this side. And I should be able to get a little bit more of that done uh, yet today here. Plus, I'm also needing to add some relief cuts in the bottom of uh, this particular piece of plywood. You can see it really doesn't line up very well with this one at all, even assuming a grade. It actually goes up. Uh, some of that is uh, again a little warpage in the plywood. I've got it clamped. So I'm going to put some relief cuts with a saw underneath just so I can flex it down a little bit easier. I'll probably cut about halfway through in a number of spots so I get it to have a little bit of a give and then I'm going to just clamp it with a piece of plywood in between until I uh, do more at a later point. So well, supports are in place and uh, everything is attached. So I'm liking how this is looking. It's going to be fun to watch some uh, narrow gauge stuff going up this once it's done. I have also added a piece right in here rather than put a bridge. I got looking at what I could do for scenery in this area. And with that high track going over the low track and then uh, you know, planning on having a big mountain in the middle here, uh, scenery just would not work to have like a, a trestle going over that low track. I just could not make it work on the inside and make it look good. So what I can do is uh, there will be a tunnel portal, one, on uh, the layout. And it will come out, uh, you know, somewhere uh, you know, about right in here. Uh, and I'm only going to have one tw tunnel portal. And uh, you might be asking, well, you've got a tunnel, you got to have two. It's like, no, I don't. Uh, and when I get the scenery going on this, at some point in the future, I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, you'll see. Uh, if it works out the way I'm thinking, it should be kind of a, a pretty good little trick and a quasi-optical illusion. But this is how it's looking right now. So i am got materials cut. I'm going to start over on this side, and then I will finish up doing the uh, pieces uh, for the middle to uh, connect up to that one and to that one. But uh, let's get this piece done first. So it's Saturday evening, and I will uh, still work out here a little bit, but i am got the major projects done for the day. One thing I did do uh, since the last video clip is after I had noted, you know, I'm going to have a tunnel portal and I'm going to do something different, I got looking at it and my grade just looked too steep. So I came back in, and from about the uh, four and a half inch mark, I started to drop the elevation by about an inch and a half. So instead of a 12 inch uh, maximum, I'm now at uh, about 10 and a half, maybe slightly less. Uh, just to kind of lower the grade, it just looks better. It's still steep, which is exactly what I want for a, a narrow gauge, but it's not quite as steep. Now I took those new measurements and I've put them uh, into play over here. So I've got things uh, up and in place and uh, tacked down. I've got to come back in now and I do have to add additional supports in different areas, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. 
So you can kind of see where the uh, logging spur is going to be. Uh, have a little bit of an elevation difference coming down to the main line going through here. I have this right now where the bridge is for the O scale. And my garage is getting crowded, so i got to kind of move. So I've got that deep gorge right there. And when I get things done, there will be another bridge right there on the ON30. So this gorge will kind of continue. It's going to kind of come up. Uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, again, mountains that are going to go much higher than the track. And, uh, you know, I'll have a gorge there and a nice curved trestle on the ON30. And I will uh, probably do the same thing on the ON30. I'll take a piece of flex track and just kind of bunch the tracks up a little bit closer. You know, it's narrow gauge. It wasn't put down with a lot of care, but, uh, you know, they kind of follow similar practices. So I'm going to have some fun with that. So what I've got left to do is I've got to connect the uh, upper level. I've got my piece uh, right over there, and I'll probably start doing that a little bit tonight. I've still got uh, some sections of it. I've got uh, clamps on where I've glued in another piece on for this. Uh, these will then connect, and it should be good there. And uh, what else? That, that's probably about it. You can kind of see how the elevation is a little bit less at the far end. Those clamps will come off tomorrow morning. I'm letting the glue cook good on the, uh, uh, the plates that I glued underneath. And uh, what I think I might do is I think I might run, uh, run a train tonight. So uh, we'll see how that looks here in a few minutes. Yes, you can get a pretty good viewpoint of how the O scale is going to be. It's really not going to be uh, visible for that much, just from tunnel portal to tunnel portal. But it's going to go across some of the most rugged scenery on the entire layout. And then the ON30 will be up above it. And crossing a lot of different scenery as well. I will build a lot of bridges on that, but uh, eh, this is taking shape. Slow but sure. Well, it is uh, early Sunday afternoon. I've got the sub road bed completed for the ON30 layout. I've got uh, all of the bracing in that I'm going to put in, at least uh, for now. I will probably add a little bit more a little bit later as I do some other things on the layout, uh, like scenery. Uh, there will be some more pieces come in that will tie into some of these braces uh, to hold the foam board up uh, because I will not start the foam board even until I get up to you know about the zero elevation on the ON30. So I will put in some supports here so I'm not wasting materials. Inside is going to be empty and hollow. Uh, you can see right here I have a long gap. That will be a long timber trestle on the ON30. The uh, angle at which the track is going to cross underneath it uh, predicated that I have a long trestle over it just so that I could account for the angle to go underneath. So that should be kind of fun. That one I will do scratch build for. So I do not have any more of the bents uh, that I got. Uh, you can see that. What was it Grand Central Gems, I think is what they were. Uh, but uh, I will scratch build a trestle for that. Uh, a little bit later, I'll probably put something temporarily in place just so I can run trains once I get track laid. So anyway, next thing I'm going to do is take it apart. <laughs> so if you watched an earlier video, by taking it apart, I'm going to just disconnect the wires at the uh, tables, uh, disconnect the, uh, the uh, bolts that I have holding it together, pull it apart, 
just make sure that everything works and then uh, you know put it back together again and make sure everything still lines up which it should uh, just uh, again one of the bulletproof testing phases make sure I didn't uh, add a screw or something where I shouldn't so I'm gonna do another time-lapse this one will be uh, taking the entire thing apart and putting it back together so on time-lapse uh, you know maybe a minute's worth of video We'll, uh, we'll see here. I'll get that set up and uh, get that going here in just a minute. Well, I think that is going to do it for this video. It is mid-Sunday afternoon. I got everything done this weekend that I wanted to on the layout. Sun is shining, so I'm going to go outside and do a little bit of yard work. And then uh, when it gets dark, come back in and uh, start playing with this again. So next time, I'm going to start laying uh, some track just to kind of get the uh, OM30 areas uh, laid out, especially right here. Uh, and then uh, get started with uh, roadbed. Start uh, building the ON 30 as far as for track. The ON 30 is a DCC system as opposed to DC for the O scale. I've got a lot of uh, DCC uh, ON 30 engines, so wiring will be uh, as simple as the DC, uh, you know, quick connect connectors go into each table, uh, some drops here and there for power, and uh, not a complicated system. So should be having some fun here pretty quick with the ON30. So keep having fun with your layouts. Until next time.